TFL EV is brought to you by Flow Charger, maker of reliable, high-quality charging stations for your electric vehicle. Hey everybody, I've got a fun video for you today because it is a super cold Colorado winter day. It's one degree Fahrenheit outside. That's like negative 17 degrees Celsius. And we're going to go drive around our hometown here in Boulder, Colorado and check out a bunch of different chargers, make sure they're working and see how they work in the bitter cold. All right, so let's go find some chargers. Now I'm going to boot up an app I use called PlugShare, not sponsored in any way. Just a really great and easy um, service which is free. You can actually find local chargers and their availability. So I think we're going to go check out this level two here, which is just a few minutes away. Let's click on the information. It seems that we have three available and we're going to go see if we can charge on, uh, on this charger. Well, it looks like our first attempt was kind of a bust because as you can see, our charger is completely in use. Interesting it didn't display that on the app though. It said there were three available and one in use. I'm wondering if maybe there's another set of chargers around here somewhere. And um, maybe we can go over to this other building here and see if we can find another set that I'm missing so we can try to plug in. But clearly those two appear to be working because both of those leaves were plugged in. A gaggle of leaves, if you will. What do you call it, a forest? What do you, when you've got multiple leaves? branch I don't know um, but let's go find uh, let's go find another one the good thing about um, my city here in Colorado is that it is very built out with charging infrastructure so it will have a lot of options all right well across the parking lot looks like we found another one we've got a leaf and a bolt that typically results in fire but um, in this situation it just means we can't charge ours interesting well, it's cool to see people using the infrastructure now this is a very large commercial complex of buildings and it's cool to see that they were proactive in installing level two chargers which is great but it um, means we're gonna have to look elsewhere all right here we go looks like we got our level two charger here let's see if we can plug in and start charging so this is level two charging or AC charging and we're gonna see, even in this extreme cold, will this charge point unit activate? So I'm gonna use my Apple Pay there. It says 6.6 .6 kilowatt unit, it's authorizing my card. Now, sometimes in this extreme cold, these wires can get really, really stiff. Um, but I'm hoping that this one will authorize. I'm still thinking about it. These typically have to be enabled with the internet so they can run your credit card. There we go. It says plug in. Let's see if we can start charging. If you want to come over here, Alex, we'll look at the screen. That beep is a good sign. All right, check that out. So even in this extreme cold, um, it says we'll get a full charge by 5 p.m. It's 11 a.m. right now. So we're at, what, 40% state of charge, and we'd be full by the time we left work if we worked here. So this charge point unit is working great. On to the next one. Well, we had great luck at that charge point unit, and based on the other ones we drove past earlier, um, it looks like they're, they're holding up really well even in this extreme cold. So I'm going back to plug share here. Let's go ahead and find a more powerful charger, huh? I think that would be a fun adventure. So we're going to go downtown and head over to... What do we got here? We have a... Uh, Boulder Nissan dealership or the Whole Foods looks like it has an EV go so I say we head there and try plugging in try to get some more uh, current battery. All right so here we are at the Whole Foods and I happen to know there is an EV go DC fast charger which is a great place for a DC fast charger because Whole Foods here is very convenient they have a ton of food options um, it's got a little cafe to hang out in um, and then, of course, if you're just doing a grocery shopping, it's great having a DC charger to get some juice while you're in the store. This is one of my favorite applications of a DC charger, actually. I think this is a super uh, useful solution. Let's see if uh, they're available. So, Alex, if you want to pan over. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Now, this is an older EVgo installation. 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 And um, the thing about these... Uh, Oh, this connector is out of service. Oh, I didn't see that on the app. All right, let's try this one. Of course, someone didn't put the CCS connector away. That's no good. All right, so uh, as I was saying, this is an older installation and 
EVgo is a charging provider, but the actual unit itself is typically made by a different company. And as you can see in this situation, that company is ABB. And you also might notice we've got a bunch of different connectors here. So we have this Chatamo port, and this would be for if you had a Nissan Leaf. Um, or like a Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid. Then we, of course we have our Tesla port here if we had a Tesla, but in this Bolt we're gonna use the CCS port. So I'm gonna go on the app and initiate the charging here. So I go to my EVgo app. Um, Whole Foods, here we go. Julieta and Patricia. So here at the station we are being charged 47 cents per kilowatt hour plus a 99 cent session fee. Ooh, that is pretty expensive. I'm gonna enable my notifications here. So now I can take this handle. I'm gonna plug into the Chevy Bolt EV, just like that. All right. And it says this connector is out of service. Hmm. Well, that's not so good. I wonder if it's just this unit or if it's this uh, whole station to get started plugging any connector. Here, this one is now showing that that is working, so I'll try that guy. All right, back to the left one here. Let's see if this connector is gonna give us any juice here. You can see it's seen some better days there, that CCS connector. This connector is out of service. Do you want to show that here? There, Alex. It's kind of washed out, but you can see. So both connectors here for the CCS port are out of service. So it looks like we will not be charging at the station. Now, I don't know if this is a result of the cold or because the hardware is broken, but there's one more EVgo station just across the way we can try, maybe we'll have better luck. So this is kind of our main shopping area in Boulder and we actually have three DC fast chargers in this one parking lot. So the first is Tesla here now. Um, Tesla hasn't yet opened up their charging infrastructure to other vehicles that are non-Teslas, although I hear I'm, I've heard that's changing super soon. But as you can see, um, folks seem pretty happy charging up their Teslas. Bunch of them plugged in. And I don't see anyone throwing anything, so I think it, they're working, um, which is good to, good to see. There's actually uh, an EA station here, which we'll try next. And you can see there's a guy servicing the EA uh, unit, which was down last time I tried to charge there. So a pretty cool turnaround. I was here just a few days ago, and now uh, that gentleman looks to be servicing that unit, which is great. Super, super cool to see. Okay, so in this garage, we're going to find the next EVgo station. Um, and I was here uh, at the same time I was charging up that uh, at the EA and, and this was down. I'm glad to see they've, they're fixing the EA. Have they fixed or are they fixing the EVgo here? Um, not so sure. Let's go take a look. It looks like it's completely offline. All right. Now this station still shows up on the app, I believe, but what's interesting is it looks like they've removed their branding. Did you see that? They wrote in Jackson, wrote in Jacqueline by hand, but you can see the station is completely offline. Yeah, nothing going on here. Um, I don't see any like shutoffs that have been flipped. And I really don't want to go opening up this electrical panel. I don't think that's my place. There's also a level two here. This one is still branded EVgo, but this one is also offline. Um, that's pretty disappointing to see. Now, if we go into the EVgo app here, just zooming in. Well, yeah, look at that. I think it's marked 29th Street. So they have the 7.772, ah, excuse me, they have the 7.2 kilowatt unit listed there, but not the, um, 
not the DC unit. So I wonder if maybe they're upgrading this because they removed their logo, if this is going to be changed with something. So we'll have to stay tuned to find out. But uh, we had good luck this morning on the charge point level twos. Um, unfortunately, none of the EVgo level uh, DC fast chargers we tried are working. Well, we made it to the EA station here. And if you want to take a look down here, you can actually see who the brand of this dispenser is. And you can see the brand is Signet. Pretty cool. And actually, I just noticed they, uh, they just added their new um, branding to this. So they're going like ultra fast, mega fast, but 150 kilowatts. But let's see if we can get this guy going. I love that they're actually out here servicing these. Uh, it's the second time I've actually seen a, uh, um, a repair guy out here on a different unit. It'd be better if they didn't break, of course. But... Uh, you know, it's great that they're servicing them. So here, we'll go ahead and try to plug in because our EVgo adventure was a little bit of a bust in our hometown here. Okay. I could use the app to activate. I think I'm just gonna use a credit card. Connecting to vehicle. Oh, it looks like it's working. Here, I'll try using a good old fashioned credit card payment. Processing payment. Payment cannot be processed. That's no good. Let me try a different card. Trying a new card there. Processing payment. Processing error. All right, well, I guess I'll go to the app and we'll try to start it with the app. All right, connecting the vehicle. Now, one thing I am also noticing, Alex, which I think is a big improvement, is check this out. They've actually re-labeled their charger, Charger 04. So they used to have this big gnarly serial number up at the top, which was like 63D-94-04, and it was hard to know which charger was which, but now they've actually given it a little, little label here, Charger 04, that's really nice. But it's not charging, which is not so nice. I've gotten stuck here in this screen though. That's saying initiating charging. It's just not talking to the charger. Ah. Trying the credit card again. Well, it seems to be connecting to the car, but it won't actually process my credit card and now the app has locked up. So we'll go try a different unit. So typically the way I like to initiate these, and this is just, it seems to work best for me, is I go into the app and then I select the charger and go swipe to charge. And it's reset, this is good, okay. This is charger 01. So let me go here, let me go charger 01. It's gonna go processing payment, initiating charging, and now it says please plug in. This cable's a little bit stiff, but not too bad. And let's see if we can get this signet unit to start delivering energy. It says initiating charging on the app. There we go. The screen has changed. Now it also says initiating charging. It's kind of all washed out there, Alex, but kind of see what's going on. It's thinking about it. Yep, just heard a contactor. And I think it's charging. You want to take a look, Alex? very washed out here. I need my Tom Malogny umbrella. There you go. 6 kilowatts, 10 kilowatts, 14, 18, 25, 35. All right. So we were able to confirm that this uh, Signet unit does deliver energy even these in these extreme colds. Pretty cool stuff. All right. Well, we had two of the four chargers successful. So we got the charge point level two working great. Um, and we passed a bunch of others that were working well as well. Uh, the EV goes we tried both of them were gone and then the uh, Electric America works great and of course Tesla seemed to be chugging along But I also want to talk about briefly how does the Chevy Bolt perform in the Colorado winter? Well, it does have some pros it does have some cons so whether or not you get the Bolt or the Bolt EUV um, both of which only come available in front-wheel drive, which is a negative, right? Because um, it's nice having that rear axle being able to push you along as well. It really makes snow uh, traversing a lot easier now, of course. A set of snow tires would vastly improve this vehicle's capability, same with an EUV, but it would still be nice to have an all-wheel drive option, especially in the crossover model. Now, 
uh, the, this Bolt comes equipped with Michelin all-season tires, but they are an efficiency-based all-season tire, and well, the, the performance is pretty lackluster. So acceleration, braking, turning, really not very good. It is a mud and snow rated tire, but it's it doesn't have a lot of grip anywhere when uh, things get even a little bit slushy or snowy. So if you were daily driving this vehicle in the winter, especially in an area where you do get snow, I would really recommend a snow snow tire because you can see full emergency braking and it does slow down, but it's it's not with a lot of confidence. Same thing with tier, turning. You get just a lot of understeer everywhere you go. Um, and then of course open diff. One thing which is impressive is when you accelerate in this stuff, the Bolt traction control programming does a great job of matching wheel speed to ground speed. So you get almost no wheel slip, especially at higher speeds, when you plant it. So the computer has instant recognizable, how do I describe it? The computer can instantly recognize that the, uh, the, 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 the tire loses grip, it cuts power to both wheels, and then it applies just a perfect amount of accelerator to match vehicle speed with the wheel speed, which is really great. Um, and the traction control, the ABS programming work well. I find I like to turn off the one pedal driving in this kind of conditions because um, when you let off, yes, it won't lock up the brakes, um, or won't lock up the wheels, I should say. It can back off the regen a little bit, but I just get a little bit more control by doing regen with my foot, and it does have a blended braking system, so the pedal goes from regen to friction brakes seamlessly. Uh, here we go, turn green here. Now, this car also has a, uh, a resistive heater, so it does not have a heat pump, which means in the winter, efficiency gets pretty bad. You can see if you want to pan down here, you can see right now it's four degrees outside and the climate control system has subtracted 42 miles <laughs> from our, uh, our charge, which is just absurd. That is a huge amount of distance and that's just having it set 70 degrees automatic in here. And the base model bolt also does not come equipped with heated seats or heated steering wheel. Upper end bolts, you can get heated seats, for example, which would um, lessen the load on that resistive heater. But here we go, entering into a little bit of a slidey section and you can see, uh, you know, it does move, it is drivable. I'm not sure I would call it safe or confidence inspiring, especially when you accelerate front wheel drive, that's full throttle. It's cutting acceleration. I can disable the traction control with a button down here. Um, and that just allows a lot more spinning, but even less control. So I th actually think this car performs pretty darn um, impressively with the traction control on. You don't seem to get any benefit by turning it off. But yeah, it's uh, you really got to stick a set of snow tires on this thing. But a really fun day out here in the super cold Colorado um, February. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm sorry if I'm a little off. I've got a pretty... Uh, Pretty nasty little cold going on, but as always, it's been Tommy behind the camera, Alex. We'll see you in the next video.